You're watching the most advanced brain-machine interface in action. Kathy Hutchinson is paralysed and unable to speak, but just by thinking she's able to control the movements of this robotic arm and drink her morning coffee. She's part of a pioneering study run by researchers at Brown University in the US. People who are paralysed have their brain disconnected from their body, so they're not able to go out and do everyday things that you and I can do, like reach for a glass of water or scratch your nose. And I think many of us don't realize how debilitating it is, especially for people who have the severest forms of paralysis uh, that's called tetraplegia, where they can't move their arms and legs because there's been damage to the spinal cord or a stroke that's cut the pathway from the brain to the spinal cord. So our idea is to bypass that damaged nervous system and go directly from the brain to the outside world. So the brain signals can not control muscles, but control machines or devices like a computer or a robotic limb. The trial is called BrainGate. The team announced their first success in 2006. Matt Nagel was left paralysed in all four limbs after he was stabbed. But using the BrainGate system, he could control a cursor on a computer screen with his thoughts. I'm going to open the first email, which says congrats. It says you are doing a great job. Next, I'm going to open the second email, which states, hi there. It says, hi, we'll talk soon. Now I'm going to the exit. Next, I'm going to paint a circle. This kind of brain-machine system has been tested before in monkeys. The brain gate studies show that it works in humans, too. So how exactly does it work? There are three main components to any brain-machine interface or brain-computer interface. Uh, there's a sensor, there's a decoder, and there's a assistive technology. The sensor is a tiny array of electrodes connected to a bundle of gold wires. It's implanted in the patient's motor cortex, the part of the brain that commands body movements. The brain activity recorded by the sensor is relayed to a computer, the decoder, and that then instructs the assistive technology. A cursor is one thing, but an arm is quite another. There's really a big challenge in moving from moving a cursor on a screen, which sort of slides around in just one, two dimensions really on a flat surface, to controlling something as sophisticated as a robotic arm that has a hand and an elbow and a shoulder and can virtually move around anywhere. To design the arm, the BrainGate team worked with robotics experts in the US and Germany. One big challenge, because no one wants a clumsy robot, was to make it react to its environment. So when it collides with a target, the bottle, it grabs it. But when there's an unexpected collision, it stops moving and enters safety mode. Eventually, the researchers hope to build an arm that works as smoothly as a real one and can cope with more complicated tasks like brushing teeth. They'd also like to make a wireless version so the device doesn't need to be plugged directly into the patient's head. But for now, they're celebrating their progress with Kathy. All of us were standing in awe, more or less, because we were watching her drinking the coffee and, and it was really such a stunning scene. That was a special moment for all of us. It was, it was a magic moment. In the nearly 15 years before, uh, before that event, uh, every time she wanted to take a drink of something, a uh, caregiver would need to place the cup or the bottle into a, into a holder that would be placed near her wheelchair, uh, position that bottle just right. Uh, to see her with that robotic arm reach out and pick up that cup of coffee and, and serve herself that coffee for the first time in, in nearly 15 years, uh, it, was, it was an incredible moment.